I'm so emotional because like when I went to psych it was just so like demeaning almost you know they take all your stuff and you know they make you feel like you're crazy and really you're not crazy you're just going through something like hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel i'm tiffany if you're new here don't forget to like comment share and subscribe um well i guess you guys are kind of wondering why i was just crying in the clip <laughs> before and it's basically because i got in contact with a clinic in Denver, Colorado, which specializes in um, people who have PNES or NES as they like to call it. Um, I call it PNES usually, but it's psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Um, these are the seizures that I've been dealing with for forever now. I believe it's been three or four years. And I got really excited because I finally found some people who um, believe in what I was saying, didn't want to put me in like a psych ward or leave me in a hospital or just like she's saying is li a lie she's making it up she's being dramatic um so i was really like into it in my feelings in this video um i look a hot mess i did not plan to record this but i thought it was an amazing conversation that needed to be shared with everyone who has pnes or nes or fns i forgot there's so many names that people call it now to the woman who actually spoke to me and was kind like I really appreciate it she she doesn't even know what she did to my heart that day and and even right now it's just it's amazing um alrighty guys I hope you enjoy and I'm sorry if this triggers any of you but just know you're not a unicorn in this world other people do have PNES NES and we believe everything that you're saying every symptom from your toe twitching to you tasting milk okay so yeah let's continue watching this video kind of first step is for you to investigate our clinic yeah. um, and see maybe what we can offer you from either distance or if it would be, you know, a one-time kind of come in and talk with us and we can maybe set you up with people who we have connections with out in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think maybe kind of you wrap your head around what we do um, and I have a website that I can give you um, and then calling us back and letting us know what, what you would find most helpful because we definitely want to help, but unfortunately we do. We're in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw so. that you guys did like a six week program. Um, like, I, I mean, I guess yeah. I could stay there for, you know, however long, cause I just want to, you know, at this point you just be healthy. So I could stay there for six weeks. Um, if that would be like a possibility to, you know, for me yeah. to be seen. Um, yeah, well, we want to make sure, again, that we're not putting any undue stress on you. Yeah. The techniques that we use, well, let me, let me start here. So, mm -hmm. if you have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. our clinic started in 2016 with Dr. Strom, who is an epileptologist, and she diagnosed epilepsy and worked with epilepsy patients. And basically what happened was she noticed that 40% of the people who walked to the door had non-epileptic seizures, which is we use the word, we use the acronym NES because we don't like that. We add the P to that, calling it psychogenic. We mm -hmm. don't like that. It's all the same thing. And I'm sure you've, you know, had yeah. it uh, yeah. called multiple different things yeah. across your journey. But um, we call it NES. And basically what she found was these patients weren't getting the care that they needed, right? They were getting shipped off to psych. And then psych was sending them back to neuro because, you know, they were having a seizure and that sounds like a neuro thing, right? Yeah. So, you know, there wasn't anything going um, on to treat these patients. So she partnered with our psychiatry department at the university and created a multidisciplinary clinic here. And so we treat non-epileptic seizures through both psychiatry and neurology um, because we believe that it is it needs both. Um, because, you know, if you've ever been told that everything is in your head, well, it is because that's your brain, yeah. right? Yeah. So we need, we need both sides of it. So uh, our first steps for the clinic, which is all kind of uh, outlined on the website, which I'll give you at the end of this, um, is you would see Dr. Strom, who's the neurologist, and she would really do a thorough exam um, neurologically and say, you know, we absolutely think this is NES. We have no fear that it's epilepsy or anything else. You know, you did mention that people have said MS before. You know, yeah. We have a lot of patients who come to us and say, I've had full workups for cardiac. I've had full workups for, you know, MS. And everything's come back. 
Yeah. Um, and so she makes sure that everything else is is good and work and normal, um, and that NES is the only thing that we're treating. Okay. Um, and so then what happens is we have a um, psychiatrist who does a full psychiatric workup. And really it's digging out all of those things that it sounds like you've been told before, like managing the depression and possibly anxiety, yeah. you know, things like that. Because even though that we don't know that NES is caused by those things, we know that they tend to exacerbate the symptoms, right? Yes. So the reason why like an emergency department would say, oh, you're just having a panic attack. Well, because the symptoms of NES sometimes really look similar to a panic attack. Yes. And so um, if we are able to manage those kind of underlying things, then possibly those NES you know, symptoms go down, right? Yes. Um, and so then that six week group that it sounds like you know a little bit about is a cognitive behavioral therapy group. And it meets once a week for six weeks. It's not like an intensive um, psychiatric care or anything like that, but it's a two hour session on Friday mornings and it happens for six weeks consecutively. And we go through basically like teaching tools and education on what this is and how do we identify triggers and stressors, right? Yeah. How do we maybe change our coping mechanisms? Um, we have patients who come to us and, and do, well, we're in Colorado, right? So yeah. patients use a lot of marijuana sometimes for us. And it's how can we kind of figure out maybe a different coping mechanism, right? Because okay. we know things like substances can help, but they're a band aid, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so um, how can we find coping mechanisms, change maybe some communication patterns between loved ones, and, and really create a healthy living environment for, for the patient to be able to recover? Because that's really, really what we have to do. We have to get to a kind of a safe and healthy spot before we're able to start decreasing those seizures. And so that's all what we consider to be cognitive behavioral informed therapy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we have a couple other things that we do, um, but those are kind of the big first three steps that the majority of our patients go through. Okay. Any questions? I'm sure you have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. I just can't think of anything like right this second, but there's, I know there's so much I want to ask. Oh, my husband I wants to ask something. So. Sorry, I missed your call, by the way. Yeah. Um, no, you were all good. I didn't know if I <laughs> had the right number. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that was it. I'm sorry. Um, good. No worries. A question um, I asked, I, I forgot her name. I think it was Beth. Um, Beth, yep. About the insurance, now, the, like the Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, yeah. That's, you guys, that's good for you guys? Like that would cover whatever we yeah, needed? Yeah, Absolutely. We, Okay. Yep. We we take basically all insurance. Our um our clinic's actually funded on Medicaid funds because the majority of our patients have Medicaid. So we really take any okay. basically any comers. We have a few kind of um <laughs> outliers, but I, yeah, fund is one of those for us. So you're good to go. Okay. And also, if if I guess after uh, barring what you get from her um her neurologist and the doctors and things of that nature, um. Mm -hmm. I guess if she's a good candidate for the six week program, um, like she stays on site for that. Like does like do I come down there and or like am, am I a part of it or am I just like is it like I know it's mostly for her, but like do I have anything to do with it or is it just like six weeks and then okay, we'll we'll move on from there. So we because the group um, is only on Friday mornings, we don't, you know, it's not like intensive inpatient therapy or anything like that. So the patient actually doesn't stay okay. in the hospital because it's outpatient. Okay. So if it came to the point where, you know, the, our physicians recommended it and you guys really were excited to do it and were capable, you know, it was um, financially doable, then we would have to, you know, to find somewhere where you guys could stay or she could stay, you know in the area because yeah. um, we don't fund uh, patients to stay here for that treatment specifically. Okay. okay. Um, and so, yeah, so that's why I'm saying, you know, we could definitely possibly get you set up for those intakes and, and look down the road to see what would be most feasible, whether or not that is, you know, you guys come in or if it's yeah. us setting up with a, a therapist that's closer to you that sounds like you might have one that can do CBT and okay. we could just maybe like talk with them, you know, and have a clinical relationship to see if they might be able to distribute the same type of care okay. um, advised by us. Okay. You know, so um, that you wouldn't have to take that financial hit because that would be quite some travel. <laughs> right. Okay. And also, yeah. 
um is it called emdr yeah the okay so if if she um can see the the therapist who does the emdr is that good to use in conjunction with the cognitive therapy like do you do all that together plus the medication or is it like we try to not do medication and just focus on the therapy yeah so patients it, it's kind of an individual basis with emdr um that is something that because i'm not a clinician and i don't know you know your wife's case i can't say that that would be good or bad for okay her. um and so that would be something that we would talk to our psychiatrist about um if you guys were able to come out here for that um but you know there's a ton of different therapies that can treat a ton of different things it's just a matter of what works best and so we know that what we do works for a good majority of patients right but we don't know that it works for every patient right. um, and some patients say that you know by the end of it you know that was helpful but I, I need to move on to maybe do something else right mm -hmm. so um, and that's perfectly okay but coming to see somebody who you know knows exactly what's going on does not think that the patient's faking it you know right. um, and is able to support the patient is really where we find a lot of our our strength um, and then whether or not they want to continue to do specific um, therapies with us is, is up to them but um, we highly encourage that wherever if, if she were to come to see us that we would um, connect with somebody closer to you that you know that she trusts um, to do this work because more often than not we find that we need to continue this work after our specialty clinic okay and so we would want somebody that you guys would get established with and trusted and and you know that knows um Tiffany probably way better than we ever um so that she would be able to do this work one-on-one -on -one with with her or him um moving forward as well okay. and that we can do both of those at the same time we don't want that to wait right. until they you see us so okay awesome all right well thank you i appreciate that yeah of yeah. course of course of course okay um also like if i were to come out there and like um like do therapy or something and i had a seizure uh i don't know what you guys call do you guys call them seizures or episodes i'm not sure <laughs> Like, call them whatever you want to call them. Oh. I think if you're calling them seizures, we'll call them seizures. Okay, yeah. Um, like, would... Because sometimes they're really bad. Like, would you... Do you guys have somewhere, like... Like, um, where I would be able to stay? Or do you guys, like, say, um, you know, go back to your house and just relax? Or, or something? Yeah, so, I mean, because we exist in an outpatient clinic, yeah. we don't have the kind of staffing to handle a patient who is seizing nonstop. Okay. For us, unfortunately, it is protocol to send to the emergency department, even though we don't want to, right? Yeah. Um, but if there was a, what one of the things that we do right off the bat is to create a seizure response plan for you. So if you're, you know, you come in and you say, hey, I might have seizures and I might continuously have seizures, then we would create a response plan and then you and your husband and then we would follow that. Um, but if, you know, the seizures lasted for such a long time that we couldn't control them, then unfortunately we have to defer to hospital protocol. But um, we usually try to at least get the patient to a safe space um, and with loved ones, you know, family members, whoever, who know how to respond appropriately and then we, we defer to basically the family member. Um, you know, because our goal is to not send anybody to the emergency room, but sometimes we just can't avoid it, yeah. unfortunately. Okay. So. I, I think I need to go down there. <laughs> I know it sounds oh, so okay, like uh, I know. Well, let's let's do this. I am meeting with all of our physicians here. Um, you know, uh, in the next twenty-four hours, I, by, before the end of the week, um, and we really chat about every case that's been presented. And so now that I kind of have a good idea of what's going on with you, maybe what I can do is chat with them and. Um, you know, see what the best route is. Right. Does that sound a little bit better? Yeah, it sounds, <laughs> both sound great to me. It's, I just, like, I, I just needed to talk to someone who knew, like, more about it and didn't think, like, I was faking or... No, you're not that. faking. The yeah. two words we don't use are the F word and the C word. Faking and crazy. Yeah. We don't use them. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, that we sounds don't use great. Them. So All I just right. need to, um, like, fill out the release forms and send them back to you and then... That's it. 
You got it. And then you, I think, let's see. I think I have your e send an upload link. I know that you have those YouTube videos which are great, mm -hmm. but we actually have a private video upload link that our physicians can look at immediately. Um, and so if you have any seizures that you think are, you know, the exact typical seizure that you have, you know, it sounds like unfortunately multiple times a day, mm -hmm. if you can go ahead and upload those for us to this website, that would be super helpful because what we'll get from the EEGs, we'll get um, the reading, but sometimes they don't get video with that EEG. And so it's helpful for Dr. Strom to be able to correlate and say, oh, okay, they're saying that she did this, I don't see this on the EEG, and I also have the video to compare that to. Okay. okay. So I'll go ahead and send all of that to you. Alrighty. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. I'm so glad you reached out. Yeah. You're your best advocate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, it was, All right. it was nice talking to you. Thank you. You do as well. I'll email you here in a bit. Okay, thank you. Bye. Oh my god, you guys. That was, sorry, that was 15 minutes. That was just Denver. I'm in Connecticut. So, I'm really far away. I'm really far away. I don't really trust anyone up here because they don't really know what they're doing, at least the people I've come in contact with. I just would feel more comfortable going out to Denver around people who know what PNES is and like understands it. So, even if I go for like two weeks, like I, I think that would be best for me to do. Um, oh my god I'm just so grateful for YouTube and like this is crazy I'm so emotional because like when I went to psych it was just so like demeaning almost you know they take all your stuff and you know they make you feel like you're crazy and really you're not crazy you're just going through something, like. I'm so emotional. I'm so emotional today, like, I'm just so emotional. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'm gonna get off of here. You guys heard it. Um, well, that was like an unexpected video. It was basically Denver. Uh, they specialize in PNES. I'll get back to you guys when I'm like not emotional wreck.